All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Delaney Demro. I'm the Sustainability Education and Engagement Manager here at ESF. Uh, before I was uh, Hired, I just graduated in December with my master's degree from the graduate program in environmental sciences here at ESF. And during my time as a student, I actually worked as a student sustainability coordinator with the division and helped develop the green purchasing guide. The previous sessions uh, earlier this week, we co-hosted with uh, Sue Fassler, the Director of Sustainable Operations, who is unable to attend today, but I just want to mention her because she had great help and work on this project as well. So welcome, and as I just mentioned, the training sessions um, have been recorded and they will be compiled and uploaded to the ESF sustainability website. And the slides and the link to these uh, recordings will be shared with all purchasers on campus and everyone who attended. So you can share these with uh, people who are unable to attend that you think uh, would find these useful. So the training is open to everyone on campus, but we especially wanted to reach uh, the State and Research Foundation P card holders and those who make purchases verse, uh, via a purchase order. Quick overview of why we are holding this training and undertaking this project. So purchasing or what it means to purchase as a state agency, then we'll go through ESF, uh, the green purchasing and break free from plastic policy. The executive order four or the green New York purchasing requirements. Then we'll go into uh, a deep dive of the green purchasing guide uh, and a deep dive of the break free from plastics policy. And then we'll open up to a discussion. So first and foremost, why are we here? Uh, here at the Sustainability Division, we like to think of ourselves as uh, change agents uh, because to support sustainable operations uh, of the college. Oh, let me pause real quick. It looks like there are people waiting in the lobby. Let me get them in. There we go. All right, jump back to my screen. So as I was saying, um, in the sustainability division, we like to think of ourselves as system change agents. And to do this, um, we like to think of ways to support sustainable operations uh, within the college. And so our role is to understand how to change and evolve um, over time to help us achieve um, not only compliance with the new uh, state mandates, but also to stay ahead of the curve and meet and exceed the expectations that others have of us here at ESF. And so to do that, we want to ensure that there's consistency not only across the Syracuse campus, but the other uh, regional campuses within the ESF system. And so um, at ESF, we recognize that it's not necessarily fair to put out policies and mandates without resources and funding to support this. So part of that effort, um, we developed the Green Purchasing Guide to support the New York State um, Executive Order 4 Green Purchasing uh, Requirements and also the ESF um, Green Purchasing Policy and Break Free from Plastics Policy. So in order to do this, um, we recognize that it's going to take some risk taking, mistake making, uh, and collaboration across the board. And we recognize that it's not going to be a perfect rollout of this uh, guide and the implementation of this policy at first, but that's why uh, we want to work together to improve how it functions uh, in the college over time. Now we'll go over the very fun uh, state agency purchasing hierarchy. So here at ESF, we are considered a state agency and we're required to follow the purchasing hierarchy uh, set by the New York State Procurement Guidelines and the New York State Finance Law. Our business uh, department has already done a really great job of explaining these to people, but we just wanted to uh, reiterate them here since it is incorporated into the guide. So for the purchasing priority, uh, you have to first find items that you're looking for through uh, preferred sources, including uh, New York State PSP, Corecraft, and NYSID. 
And then if you can't find what you're looking for there, you can move on to vendors uh, that have contracts with OGS. And if you can't find it there, you can move on to SUNY specific and other state agency uh, contracted vendors. Then and only then if you can't find what you're looking for through those vendors, you can move to a discretionary or open market um, system. And it's also important to remember that um, we need to purchase from and prioritize purchases from minority and women owned business enterprises and service disabled veteran owned businesses, and they should be utilized whenever possible throughout the hierarchy. So the green purchasing and break free from plastic policy was adopted by the college in 2021 and just in December, so very recently. Um, now I want to pause real quick and show you how to find this policy on the ESF website. So if you go to the policies and procedures page on uh, the ESF website, you can scroll down and you'll find the green purchasing and break free from plastic policy right here. And I encourage you to take a look through this and read through uh, just to get more specifics than we can go through during this brief presentation. And then the green purchasing guide is right here. And this is what it looks like when you open it up. But we'll go through this a little bit more in detail later. So the green purchasing and break free from plastic policy really just reiterates our commitment to the New York State purchasing mandates, and we're also taking them a step further to get ahead of the curve, but also um, because we are ESF and we need to practice uh, what we are teaching here. Also, um, just to give you an idea of what the future is looking like, um, Recently, I think it was just in January, the SUNY Board of Trustees uh, passed a resolution to. Oh, is someone checking? Oh, and if you have just joined, uh, please uh, mute your microphones. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Thank you. Back to the presentation. So the SUNY Board of Trustees just passed a resolution in January uh, to create a task force to encourage all SUNY campuses to um, reduce their use of single use plastics. And uh, Sue and I are both uh, on these task forces to really develop um, ways to um, make that transition away from single use plastics. And here at ESF, we are taking this a step further because we recognize that encouragement is not going to be enough to really make those necessary changes to reduce our environmental impacts when it comes to waste. And so we developed the break free from plastic policy, which was really adapted from the break free from plastic pledge uh, created by the post landfill action network. So before we dive into the Executive Order 4 or Green New York purchasing specifications, uh, I first want to address that it is OK if you did not know that these existed. I mean, I started working on this project when I was a student, and so I obviously didn't know uh, that these existed, but we learned from the previous presentations we've given this week and beforehand, um, which initially motivated us to create this guide that there's very little awareness that these are out there uh, and that we should be following them, um, you know, here at SUNY ESF and at other state agencies. Um, so it was really a effort from the ESF housed Center for Sustainable Materials Management, whose goal is to help New York State really reduce its resource consumption and waste generation uh, to create this guide to assist people and give them resources to follow these mandates that are in place. So before I go into this, I want to show you how to find uh, these specifications uh, on your own. 
So if you just Google OGS Green New York, it should be the first link right here. If you click that and open it up, it'll bring you to this page and you could just click specifications and it'll show you that page I just had on the slides. And if you scroll down, It'll have links to all of the different specifications like electric hand dryers, the requirements for computers and monitor displays and every other uh, type of, you know, most commonly used items uh, at state agencies. Back to the presentation. So just to reiterate, there are over 70 Green New York specifications and this list is always growing. At the moment, there are three tentatively, tentatively approved uh, specifications. And so um, with this growing list, we will be updating um, the green purchasing guide to incorporate all of these. And just to give you an idea of what the specifications look like, because this is what was put in place um, and was given to purchasers by the state to um, find products that meet these specifications. So there's a lot going on here and what's really missing is links to products that are actually considered green by these specifications. So we developed the green purchasing guide to kind of take that onus off of uh, purchasers so you don't have to do that research to find those products because um, as someone who, you know, spent a lot of time developing this guide, it's a very large ask for um, every single person to find products that meet all of these specifications. So as I mentioned before, campus awareness of the Green New York, New York specs is very low, and so our goal is to make green purchasing easy. Um, and so we are piloting the green purchasing guide here at ESF. And um, as I mentioned, since this is an effort from the Center of Sustainable Materials Management, uh, there are hopes to replicate this effort throughout the state. And we've actually already been getting a lot of buzz from other agencies who want to use our guide and uh, adapt it for their own purposes. So as I mentioned, we want to create a closed loop and responsible purchasing system. So we developed the guide by reviewing um, the purchases from 2019 and 2020, so pre-COVID standard um, campus purchasing trends. Uh, we identified the top 10 vendors um, by a dollar amount, but then we also identified um, the top most commonly purchased items uh, on the ESF campus, both by dollar amount and by quantity. So um, we developed the guide using these most commonly purchased items and listed um, versions of these items that met the Green New York specifications, if there was one for that specific item. And if there was not, we looked for third party specifications, so like Eco Logo or Green Seal or USDA Organic if it was food and that kind of uh, stuff. And if something like that didn't exist, we applied the Green New York purchasing or ESF green purchasing specifications, um, which include whether or not a product is made from recycled content. If an item has packaging, it's minimal, recyclable and or compostable. Or if an item is um, easily reusable, durable or it has easily replaceable and refillable parts. So as I mentioned, the guide will be updated on a quarterly basis based on uh, your suggestions, um, the newly identified green products and the new um, Green New York specifications that come out over time. So we recognize that the guide we developed is definitely not going to be comprehensive for all of the products that you need to purchase. Um, just to have regular operations here on campus. So anything that you find um, that you need um, a version of a product for to meet one of the Green New York specifications, if you find that product, please let us know and we'll be happy to add it to the guide. But if you need help doing that research, also reach out to us and we'll be happy to assist with that as well. 
And uh, one of our next steps is going to be determining the best way to track compliance uh, with the Green New York specifications uh, here on campus. Uh, there isn't a plan in place just yet, but that is something um, that is coming soon. And again, we wanted to just put this here again, not necessarily just to scare you, but to give you a comparison of what you know the resources used to look like and what the green purchasing guide provides for you. So let's check out the guide. So this is the front matter of the green purchasing guide. Um, we put all of the green New York purchasing specifications right up front. All of these are live linked, so they're easily accessible for you. And throughout the guide, um, all of the products and vendors um, have a symbol key throughout, um, and this follows the purchasing hierarchy, as I mentioned before. And so anything that you see uh, in yellow, you're going to want to check out that vendor first uh, for that item. But if that doesn't meet your needs, you can move on to the other levels within the hierarchy. And then the other set of symbols you will see is going to be based on shape, which will show whether or not a item meets the Green New York specifications, if uh, a product has a specification, if not the third party certified, and then if not those, then the ESF uh, policy. So here's what it looks like once you actually dive into the guide. This is an example for office supplies. So before, if you uh, wanted to purchase a file folder, there would have been a whole list of um, you know, chemical um, like processing requirements and recycled content requirements you'd have to look for. But what we did was find products that met all those specifications, put them right here, uh, listed underneath the vendors that you're probably already familiar with and already purchasing from, and live linked it to those specific items to make that um, purchasing process a lot simpler. Uh, and to give you another idea of some other sections, we also included um, food service and cafeteria items. Um, and I just want to emphasize the, <clears throat> excuse me, the rentable reusable uh, dinnerware section right up front, because we want to emphasize uh, reusables over compostable um, disposables, because even though they are biodegradable, they are still single use and still create waste at the end of the day. So since the Trailhead Cafe um, Save a Plate program is no longer operating uh, in the meantime because of disruptions from the COVID pandemic, um, we want to say for larger events that the sustainability division is willing to help with the funding and process of uh, renting uh, reusable dinnerware from uh, local vendors, and if you need reusable dinnerware for smaller events, there is the <clears throat> reusable plate program housed in Bray 2, which is the faculty and staff break room in Bray Hall. Um, the Undergraduate Student As Association has a small stockpile of plates, cups, and utensils there, and there is a dishwasher, so whatever you need, just sign it out. And wash them and return them and you're all set to go free of charge. So before I dive into the break free from plastic policy, I just want to go over a couple items in the green purchasing guide since it also includes some notes and important tips throughout. So First, I want to show you um, all of the different categories of products that are included within this guide. It includes office supplies, janitorial, trades and facilities, electronics, food service and cafeteria. We do recognize that electronics is listed twice here, so we will definitely fix that in our first update. And then there's also a small section for sustainable apparel. And then there's the symbol key we mentioned. And then the next page shows what all of the symbols you'll see in the guide mean. And then an important note about staples and ProfTech ordering. So ProfTech is uh, the New York State certified uh, minority and women owned business enterprise. 
and they provide all of these same items as staples, but um, we have a priority to purchase through ProfTech instead. So in order to do so, you need to set up a ProfTech account and contact the business office to do so, and then uh, you will be all set to go there. And then there's a table of contact, and these are all live linked, so you can jump through as you need to. And first, I want to show you at the beginning of each one of these sections, there is going to be a table of contents for all the products listed, and these are also live linked. So let's say uh, you need pens, you could just click that and it'll take you to it. And then, as I mentioned, there are important notes throughout. So for example, here, um, purchasers at the ESF Syracuse campus should uh, request uh, copy paper through the copy center. And so uh, we really listed copy paper here as meant for uh, the regional campuses and anyone outside of the ESF system that wanted to use this guide. And so when using the guide, just look through and if you see anything highlighted in red, definitely check it out and read it before um, continuing. All right, back to the presentation. So the ESF break free from plastic policy um, has outlined that the most commonly used single use plastic items are no longer able to be purchased uh, with state funding for use on college property or at college events. So also members of the campus who purchase these items with their own funds should also avoid bringing these to campus because it still gives that appearance that we're not following um, this policy. So all of these items that we have listed here, the um, reusable or uh, compostable versions of them are included within the guide. So hopefully it'll make that transition to following this policy um, a lot sooner. But we do recognize that avoiding plastic completely is not practical. So um, there are many exemptions um, from this policy as it stands right now. So this includes some items like plastic trash and recycling bags, plastic wrap used for doing uh, during food prep, um, and other um, packaging that you get from external caterers and vendors and stuff like that, that you can't necessarily avoid because it's just part of their process. Also, um, we wanna emphasize that single use paper items that are coated in plastic, which usually have a waxy or shiny appearance, um, they are not a viable substitute for the products we listed before because um, those features of being plastic coated makes it um, unable to be recycled or composted. So it should be considered a plastic item still. And we emphasize that it's important to prioritize durable, reusable and washable items to replace single use items. But when that's not possible, use uh, compostable products and we want to emphasize that um, these compostable products should be certified by BPI or the Biodegradable Products Institute because other products that aren't BPI certified can contain some chemicals that are still harmful to the environment even though they do biodegrade. So I touched on this a little bit before. Um, at events, there are the reusable plates, cups, and utensils um, available in Braid 2. And so you just have to request it um, and follow the procedure. And our goal is to have total avoidance of single-use products at events uh, hosted by ESF. So I know that was a whole bunch that we just went through. So here are some of the key takeaways we want you to remember from this presentation is that compliance with the Executive Order 4 uh, Green New York uh, purchasing mandate is required for state agencies, including ESF. Uh, we at the Sustainability Division and the Center for Sustainable Materials Management created the Green Purchasing Guide um, to assist campus purchasers to make compliance with EO4 uh, simpler, and we will update 
the guide on a quarterly basis, and we're always uh, ready and happy to um, assist you with researching products and adding to uh, the guide as you need. And finally, many single use plastic products are no longer able to be purchased with state funds for use on college property or at college events. We really encourage you to read that policy to um, get a better understanding of what um, items are included under that. And when you do need um, plates, the Undergraduate Student Association plate program um, is available and we can also help with some funding for larger events. With that, uh, we will open it up for discussion. And first, I just want to give you our um, contact information in case you uh, need to reach out with us uh, for any questions and stuff like that. 